Hey travelers, join me for a fat test and walkthrough of Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. Time to fat test the cat in the hat here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. That's a big hat. Five minute wait. No line, we'll walk right on in perfect timing because we'll catch the next one. Here you go, it's essentially a bench seat with three different little seats. Comes right down under my gut. There's a little netting here. There's plenty of room for another person. I've ridden this with someone else before. Uh oh, there's the cat showing up. They can't go outside. Remember when kids wanted to go outside, but they couldn't because it was raining? Bye. Bye, mom. Hi, Bye. made us jump. We looked, and we saw him stepping on the mat. We looked, and we saw him. The hey, cat. cat. Make that cat go away. Play. He should not be about when your mother is out. Why, you can have lots of good fun if you wish with the game that I call Up, Up, Up with a Fish. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the cat with a cup and a cake on the top of my hat. He might be mischievous. He's on a screen, but he's not using screen. Oh, no. What's happening on? Oh. To my husband. Oh, no. I do not. I don't trust those things. <laughs> How'd you get up there? Uh oh. All the popcorn. <laughs> I like the toilet paper. Trying to hypnotize me, cat. Yes, my mother. Your mother. Your mother is near. Just can't. Think of something to do. You have to invent something. Ah! So as fast as I could, I went after a mitt. I bit with my mitt. I can get those things yet. You got them. Oh dear. You did not like our game. What a shame. What? The ball. Turn off. This looks like my kitchen. This mess. Said the cat with a hat. I always pick up my playthings, and so I will show you a good for you, cat in the hat. Then our mother came in and said to us, Did you have any fun? Tell me, what did you do? Should we tell her about it? No, what should we do? What? Well, what was you do if your mother asked you? The cat in the hat passes the fat test. Next up is the Kara Susel. And of course, you exit through the gift shop with all the things. That's a fun display. Let's check out the If I Ran a Zoo walkthrough. If I ran a zoo, said Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I do. If you want to catch beast, you don't see every day. You have places to go quite out of the way. You have places to go no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet too. Too far, too near. Let's go too far. Start cranking and see what sort of him. There's no, there's nothing to crank. It's a speaker, but there's nothing to crank. Oh. Uh, I can make it. I made it. <laughs> I went to the African island of Yurka to find a tizzle top tuft mazurka. I'm not sure exactly what you have heard, but there's more than one way to flush out that bird. Oh boy. 
I'm gonna get wet. <laughs> ah! No, oh, there it is. <laughs> A shy little guy whose face never shows unless you're real good at tickling toes. Okay. There's the toes. Apparently I'm not very good at tickling toes. There he is. Oh, I don't know. Insert camera here for fun, free picture. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> in a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called a Natch. There's no other hunter's been able to catch He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout, and no one can be able to make him come out. Can you? Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh my gosh. Snacks? I can't believe I do this stuff. Can you get me? Oh, God. Over here. Over here. Oh. Over here. I made it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. You'll see a big bug who is very surprising. A feller who has a propeller for rising. All that he needs is the air that you can pump while marching along on my stump of wop. All right. Oh. A water fountain that's cute free water for all my friends the tall ones the mediums and the short ones i won't build a cage for this cow in my zoo i'll let my friends ride it that's just what i'll do now you can play with my friend tic tac joe put your hand on his belly and he'll choose the o Don't know if they're saying anything or not. Okay. You must take a bath and be clean in my zoo. It's the one thing some animals just don't like to do. This one, however, thinks it's quite fun. He got here last Tuesday at 20 past one. This drowsy guy is quite a deep sleeper. He won't even wake up for me, the zookeeper. He sleeps all night long and all through the day. If he woke up right now, just what would he say? Scragglefoot McGillicottony. Guaranteed Mully has a bad cold. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed me for our trip to the zoo. If you had your own, just what would you do? Time to fat test one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. You can get a little wet on this ride if you're not careful. From there to here, from here to there, funny things are everywhere. I like how they count the things here. Oh, so really? you turn you turn them when they Yeah, when you if put it's somebody. empty, it looks like this. Uh -huh. And then if I put two people, then I go two or number eight. Oh, that's really cute. Mm -hmm. And then I can do a single. I think this is the only ride that does something like that, right? Huh? I think this is the only ride that does something like that. Yeah, I think so. I mean I'm not sure not every ride, but I think this 
pretty different, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> we are number 10. We're a yellowfish. With a banana. The banana has been removed. I didn't want to make a bigger mess. The seat is just a touch wet, not much at all. Here's the belt. If you had another person with you, you would definitely want to get one of the two fish. If you had a kid and you're a bigger person especially, I think definitely recommend, I mean, I, they'll do it anyway, I'm sure. But you would need the uh, two fish for both of you to fit. But then there's those options and I appreciate that. Like most rides of its type, this is up and down. Hang on tight. Hang on tight. Because here we go. Bye, Bluefish. Now you can fly more high anywhere. Keep Let's go high. But beware, look down below. There are creatures there who will soak you head to toe. Oh. Now hear this, all fish. Well, let's go down. Follow me and you'll stay dry. One fish, red fish, up, up, up. Two fish, blue fish, down, down, down. Down, down, down. Up. I don't think she's being honest. Oh. That was good, but now I say fly up or down the other way. The other way. Fish, blue, fish, up, up, up. One fish, red fish, down, down, down. Down, down, down. Down, down, down. Up, up, up. One fish, two. Down, down, down. One fish, two. Up, up, up. One fish, two. Up, up, up. Down, down, down. Ah! Got me. That was great, but now I'll bet. You might end up a little wet. The choice is yours, fly high or low. Just get one, you never know. <laughs> it's a very tense ride. I don't know if I'm going to get wet or not. Now I'm flying. It's nearly done. We've had some fun. <laughs> Am I gonna get out of it? No! What are we yelling? Yay! Hey! friends, we made it back until your swimming ends. Alan, buckle your belt and exit your seat. Don't run, skip, hop, or jump. Just walk on your feet. One fish, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish passes the fat test. There is a stage back here. I don't think it's been used in a while, though. I don't know what you are, but you have eyes. Welcome, boys and girls. Oh, I guess Stay it's another and fish. And enjoy your fish flight. The street of the lifted Lorax. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds sing excepting old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? And far from the end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old onceler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Here's the old Wunzler's house. Hello? Are you home? He must be out and about. Because... Because someone like you cared a whole awful lot, this park is alive, where before it was not. Looks like Circus McGurkis is under construction. Story times. Dr. Seuss, all the books you can read. This is cute. Hey, if a theme park can encourage your kids to read more, that's awesome. The Hop on Pop ice cream shop, and we are headed over to the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride. Time to fat test the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride.
They are divided seats. I wish it was a bench seat. It is high up. All right. There we go. Actually fits fine. These are individual. I fit great. Getting in and out of that is a little difficult, but ultimately it does pass the fat test. Well, hello, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Police Officer. So I was feeling a little something sweet, so I got the brookie. I asked, this was apparently the most popular thing. It's a cookie and a brownie. So let's see if it's any good. Hmm. I mean, it's good, but really the only thing I can taste is the brownie. It pretty overpowers the cookie. That's tasty. Think left and think right. Think low and think high. Oh, the thinks you can think if only you try. Bye-bye as we leave Seuss Landing. We have entered the lost continent. So this used to be the home of Poseidon. But Poseidon is now closed. That's a great looking out, out exterior though, isn't it? Man, that's just killer. There's not a ton in the land now, but I do think the architecture and the everything here, as you can see, he's actually looking at his own reflection in the mirror, in the water. Mythos, world's best theme park restaurant. I don't know when that was done. So yeah, they have no idea when that sign was put up or what year they were named or best theme park restaurant. A lot can change over the years. Those are important things to ask and know. Treasures of Poseidon shop. Fire Eaters, which is a quick service restaurant. What did we come upon? King Julian. 
this area seems to have a lot of little performances and character meet and greets, so you always want to make sure to check it out if you're anywhere near the Lost Continent area. I mean, who doesn't love King Julian? My friend grabbed the vegan kebabs here, which are $14.99, and he said they were phenomenal. For some reason, there's horror stuff back here. Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Fiance of Frankenstein. I don't get the the theming here in the middle of the Lost Continent, but Halloween Horror Nights is one of their favorite things, so I guess it makes sense to have somewhere to sell it in Islands of Adventure, because the event actually takes place in Universal Studios. And that brings us to Hogsmeade. Now, we're not gonna do Hogsmeade right now, uh, even though it's the next thing. I wanna end with that, because I want to take the train over to Universal Studios to end this video. So we'll come back and do this at the end. As we leave Hogwarts, we're gonna come into the Jurassic area. Jurassic Park. Next up is the Velocicoaster. Time to fat test Velocicoaster here at Islands of Adventure. So the test seat's a little hidden. There is a sign here, but it's right over here behind by the entrance. It's actually really tight just trying to get into this thing. And so I cannot get up under here. Um, can you wait? Oh, never mind. Hold on. You can't even sit in the seat? Yeah, I can't get in the seat. And this is very there. painful. Oh. Yeah, this was the toughest one yet, so I cramped up on that one. Replacing Triceratops Encounter, this ride opened in June of 2021. It has a 4,700 foot track, reaches miles up to 70 miles per hour, has four inversions, a 155 foot height, and a 140 foot drop. This ride actually has two separate launches, one being 0 to 50 in 2 seconds, and the other being 40 to 70 in 2.4 seconds. It has a lap bar type restraint. The ride has 12 airtime moments, a 100 foot long 0G stall, and a barrel roll over the lagoon for its finale. The Golden Ticket Awards ranked at number 18 in 2021 for steel roller coasters, but it rose to number 5 in 2022 and number 3 in 2023. It was also ranked the number two best attraction installation of 2021. You are not allowed to carry anything onto this ride. That means that your phones and everything else must go into the tiny locker provided. If you have a bag, you need to put it in one of the larger lockers outside the ride. To guarantee this, you will have to go through metal detectors at the end of the queue to make sure that you have nothing in your pockets. So on that ride, you can't have your phone on you at all. You have to put it in the locker. And since I wasn't going to fit anyway, that was pretty clear, and I couldn't film the seat, I went ahead and exited uh, because they actually put you through a metal detector and everything. So I just figured I would wait, and I'm going to wait on my friend and see how the ride went for him. These poor Jeeps went through it. By the way, if you have photo pass, you can stand in that box after you scan your card and you can get some photos done automatically. If you're into some carnival games and want to win some Jurassic prizes, this is a good area for you. 
Pizza Predatoria. Some quick service pizza options. Here's the Raptor encounter. Now I've never done this. Um, this is the fourth time I've been here. I might consider doing it. Let's see. But uh, there's two different, you can either meet the adult Raptor or the puppet, the small little baby Raptor. They are actually closing the line right now. So I will have to do it another time. Camp Jurassic is a play area for kids. There's also a flying pterodactyl kind of ride, but you do have to have a kid with you. And I have a feeling based on the composition of it uh, that it would not pass the fat test. But you're welcome to try. Unfortunately, River Rapids is under refurbishment right now. So we're not gonna be able to fat test that one, but I did do it on my last trip here. So let me include that footage. All right guys, Jurassic Park River Adventure. We're almost there. So the seats here are a large bench seat, as you can tell, and then everybody sits on the row and the bar comes down over everybody. I want to tell you why that created an interesting adventure. Most of the ride is a very gentle riverboat ride. This is the one part that's actually pretty cool. It's with the uh, dinosaur and then the drop. It's about six and a half minutes long total, but this is nice, especially when the weather's warm. But now let me tell you a fun story. It's just a big bench seat with a bar, but the bar only goes down to the biggest person, which is me. There was another little girl beside me and I was kind of terrified because there was a lot of open space and we all asked like twice. I was like, it's okay. And it was fine. I mean, like, it's not a dangerous ride. There's one big drop and the gravity, way gravity works and all, she wouldn't have, um, and the trajectory was fine. But she kept standing up and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm terrified because I didn't know what was coming. Um, anyway, uh, I survived it and it passed the fat test. There's the pterodactyl ride I mentioned. Fat testing Skull Island, Reign of Kong here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. I think this has one of the best facades of any ride. I've actually, so I, this was down when I came last time to do this. It's a lot of skulls. I feel like I'm in danger. So who's stacking all the skulls? Oh wow. that sacrifice I guess. Oh, it's a 3D ride. Eighth Wonder Expedition. Missing. Oh great. Looks like it's long bench seats, that's great. Not a lot of room in front. Plenty of room on the seat. Your rear end down and your hands, arms, and feet. Around the great wall. Okay, put on your goggles, but keep your eyes wide open. Don't back feed off.
That is a much better version of Fast and the Furious Supercharged, but I still feel like the queue, the entrance, everything about it says it should be more, and it just doesn't do justice to that amazing animatronic at the end. Uh, but the important thing is it passes the fat test. We've made our way to Toon Lagoon. Time to fat test Dudley do Rights Ripsaw Falls here at Universal's Island of Adventure. <laughs> this will be my first time on this and Dudley Do-Right is old IP and I love it. I am all for the extreme classics here. Now, I have a feeling like even people my age don't know Dudley Do-Right, but for me, I love this. It's a water ride in January. Of course, it's only five minutes. Hey, where do we get the water? It's a long walkway. Yukon! <laughs> our head performer and our backing player. Pause, Saw Wars. You get popcorn for five cents. Three men and a grizzly. Silence of the hams. Uh-oh. Coming soon from Snidely Whiplash. Not slamming. For reference, this is a cartoon that premiered in 1959 originally. And then I think it ran through the 80s. And then there was a movie in 1999. His first and his last. Oh, we enter indoors. Okay. Going to row seven. So where do I actually? Okay. Can I get in? Get down here. You wanna wait for the, the bigger boat? Yeah. Okay. One second. Okay, I could have forced myself into it possibly, but I wasn't sure I'd ever get out and I didn't want to get embarrassed. So apparently there's a larger one. I'm gonna try that. So there's only one of the uh, plus size one and it's also the tall people use it as well. So I've got to wait a while to do it. If they had, like, if it was a busy day, you'd really be waiting a long time. I think they have others, but they're just not in commission today. All right, here is, you can tell it's got a red seat. It's different than all the others. Much better. Go. Perfect. Pass the fat test. Now, good. That took eight minutes, by the way. Down the fat turn player of the silver screen, we enter a moving melodrama. Okay, so I thought it was just like a splash, kind of like Splash Mountain. No, you go under a waterfall, and then the ending, that's not just like falling, going downhill. It turns into like a little roller coaster thing. It's awesome and crazy. 
and you get very wet. Obviously, I wish they had more of those modified seats going, but the modified seat was very comfortable, much easier. Um, they need more of them, but yeah, it worked perfectly fine. I had to wait uh, just about eight minutes total for that to come back around. And, um, but yeah, it was a fun ride. I love the gags. I, again, I, I grew up with my grandmother often watching old cartoons. Um, so I love that kind of stuff. And, you know, this classic slapstick kind of comedy you don't see today. So I, I think that's fantastic. And if you're like me at all, make this a must do, even if you have to wait. But yes, with the modified seat, Dudley's do ride trips off falls, passes the fat test. They do have a place here to dry off if you need it. I think it's, it was $7 now. Ooh. But generally multiple people can fit in it if you have a party. Okay, going into the main part of Toon Lagoon now. And a lot of people want this stuff replaced. It's old, old, old cartoons. Uh, Popeyes, you know, Be uh, Beetle Bailey, uh, all, the, all the comic book kind of stuff. Now, I love it. I, this is not my generation, but I'm an old soul. So I love this. And the wind is really picking up. I'm actually surprised it's still operating in this weather, but bilge rats, barges. Fat testing Popeye and Bluto's bilge rat barges here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventures. Sailor of the year. Literally nobody's in line. Spinach. Boatload detour. All right. Looks like Popeye's name's been removed. You will get soaking wet. It's first class or no class. Picture spot. What is this? Oh, if you put him through the other side. I feel like he's a little bloated. Or just me. Pull rope for help. Complaint office. Oh. <laughs> you set the bomb off. Cut. Chest spinach. What is going on here? Ah! Root of the year. There's a waiting area here, I guess. I'm the only one getting on this that did not bother getting a poncho. Let's see. Might have a boat to myself. I appreciate you. Let me know. All right. Got it? Got it. You are awesome. Thanks, Greg. Burgers to go. Can I get two, please? Oh, boy. Oh! 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 So wet. Mm. Oh, no. Here's the first one. I'm about to get drenched. Oh, no. Oh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I usually take my socks off, but I forgot. Oh, again. Just 
just a reminder, I'm filming this on January 9th. That ride is essentially like standing under a waterfall. And it's great in the summer, I'm sure. Um, but, whoo, we made it. And it passes the fat test. It was really tight. I, I'm gonna be asking guest services for them to get extension belts for it. That's something easy they can do. That's not a, a big expense to make that more accessible. And um, hopefully you'll join me if you come and visit. We ship the olive. Now this is just, I think, a play area for um, for the kids and all. But we'll explore it and it looks like we might have it to ourselves. You can also go down here and just get a good view of the lagoon. There's olive oil. There's some cool play areas in here for the kids. There's a slide. There is an elevator or stairs to go up. Spinach. Oh, that is not what you're supposed to do with those, I guess. <laughs> I thought they were like punching bags. You do have to see the attendant for elevator access. Also, the upper level seemed to be closed. The inside also had a rope in front of it, so we can only get down to the lower level. So I'm going to have to go finish up this another day because it's lightning. A lot of the rides that I have left to do uh, are shut down because of that. But uh, I wanted to point out one other thing. First off, thank you to all the Patreon members. Uh, you're, this video is going to continue for you guys, but I want to take this moment to thank all the Patreon members that helped make this a reality. If you'd like more information and to support the channel, check below. But also, this is a cool fact. Boris from the Bullwinkle Show uh, is also is Paul Fries, who is also the voice that narrates the Haunted Mansion. Kaboomski! And we're back to finish off this fat test to travel walkthrough. There's still a lot of great gags here. Again, this is all the Sunday fun, uh, funny papers. Blondie. Actually, you know what? Let's see what they have to eat. I might grab something. Dagwood. Oh, it's a sandwich place. So that's the Dagwood. I'm not a big ham fan, so I might skip that one. So I don't think they bother actually creating any merchandise from any of these comic strips. What I would love to see them do, if they're going to retheme this, is retheme it to 90s Nickelodeon. They are playing the old cartoons here. In case you've never seen it, that's Dagwood. They do have a lot of the Betty Boop stuff here if you don't want to go over to Universal. Okay, I found some of the comic stuff. They have Felix the Cat, Popeye. Which is good, because they have Popeye stuff. They don't have a Felix ride, as far as I know. I like this. I mean, I would wear it as a t-shirt. I wouldn't wear the slurps. If that went up to 3X, I would get it. It only goes up to 2X. That's fun. Betty boop a doop and here's actually where the Universal Pass Holder Lounge is. If you're a pass holder, you can come here for the exclusive merchandise or just uh, you need a place to relax. And every month they give you uh, some sort of thing. That's what this is, this month's giveaway. You can some come see Kathy for some ice cream or stop by the Comic Strip Cafe. That pork ramen actually looks good. We keep going down, we've got some more carnival games. There's actually some properties that you see that they don't have any other stuff for. You see Sonic the Hedgehog over there. Uh, Maybe some of this stuff will come to Epic Universe. They really need to add more to Universal Studios at this point. Uh, and they're going to have to get rid of The Simpsons in the next few years. I think 2028 20, at the latest. They have Jaws characters. That's cute. They also have My Little Ponies toys and I saw Rugrats as well. Now we make it into the Marvel area. They've got some construction going on over here. This is the temporary entrance for Spider-Man. Fat testing the amazing adventures of Spider-Man here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. So the entrance here is closed, but the attraction is not. There's an entrance on the other side right now. A five minute wait time, I love to see it. The Daily Bugle. J. Jonah Jameson. I want a Daily Bugle bike. Oh, I used to love that cartoon so much. Oh. Here's the vehicle, it looks a lot like Transformers. 
Might be the exact vehicle. He stole Lady Liberty. <laughs> Gotta grab your 3D glasses. Spider-Man, hero or menace? Unfortunately, it looks like you can't go through the original queue right now, which is um, really cool. You go through the offices of the Daily Bugle. Yep, it is the same vehicle as Transformers over at Universal Studios. Bugle Press. I have the row to myself. Just pull that down. Fits fine. Hello? This is Jonah Jameson. Roger, over. Is this thing on? Listen, Scoop. Crime reports are coming in from all over the city, and I'm starting to get worried. Did you see that? The spider signal. Was Spider-Man nearby? Trouble can't be far away. And you know what trouble means. Headlines! National coverage! So don't screw this up! Oh, I mean, uh... Oh, man, you shouldn't be out here. <laughs> Doc Ock on the loose. This could be the most dangerous night of my life. And yours. Be careful. Nice shakes. Uh, that's my thing, it's hard, man. That is my favorite version of that ride system, and uh, it passes the fat test. Spider Man gift shop. Hey. That cartoon was, that original cartoon was just so good. No line for Captain America? I think I will. Uh, uh, well, my second time. Comics. This one. They have all the comic posters up here. So this is why uh, Disney can't have a lot of the Marvel characters in their parks, even though they own them. And this one actually sells comic books. You can get a Captain America shield. 
That's a great figure. It's $1,845 here. There's also a Vision. You have to get them together or she'll go crazy. There's Wolverine in his yellow outfit. Cyclops and Storm doing meet and greets over here. Captain America Diner. So I did go ahead and order lunch here. Uh, I didn't get the Captain America burger. Instead, I got a chicken sandwich. And uh, if you, you can mobile order and you can get your discount, make sure to scan your ID. Make sure to apply your, your annual pass discount if you have one. Or you can just order here. But if you just... This is really cool. Um, I like that classic Iron Man. If you order mobile order, then you come to whatever table you're getting, and then they'll have you scan this to say what table you're at, and they'll bring it right to you. This is fun. They do have a condiments bar over here. I went basic. I got a grilled. Um, well, that's... That's ridiculous. If y'all could have seen my face. Okay, so I went and talked to them. They're gonna make me one that actually has more than the half a chicken. It's like half a chicken tender. Um, that's funny, but they're making it right. So I appreciate that. Actually, they're going above and beyond because they said I could keep this one and I really appreciate that. Um, so good for them. That's much better. Look at that. Now, look. I am of the persuasion that when you eat somewhere, things happen, right? And when something happens, um, it's okay. Especially if they make it right, that's actually something bad happening can actually, not bad, but you know, a little bit of a very, very slight annoyance. Is your opportunity to go above and beyond and fix things and make it better for the customer. And these guys did that here and I really appreciate them. That was awesome. So I took a bite of the first one, and I took a bite of this one, and the second one, now the actual full, has a full patty, is much juicier, and actually much tastier. The first one was fairly dry, because it's not a lot to it, and I think it probably got a little bit cooked because of that. So I really appreciate it. Again, um, so it's pretty good. I mean, it's a chicken sandwich. It's a very basic chicken, grilled chicken sandwich. But it was um, like $14 with my annual pass discount. And for theme park food, that's not terrible. Time to fat test Dr. Doom's fear fall here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. It's a free fall ride, not a long wait, but here is the test seat, which is extremely small. You can see, interestingly with this one, there's not even a lot of seats, room to go back. You're pretty much, for men, you're gonna be in a lot of pain with this, so I'd be careful with that. I can already tell that is a tiny, tiny seat. I want to show you the queue before we actually get to the seat. We're going to check out the queue. Latveria Embassy. So you're entering the uh, Dr. Doom's Latveria Embassy. The Doombot Code of Ethics. Repeat while charging. I will follow and obey my master, Victor Von Doom, undisputed leader of the country of Latveria, protect Dr. Doom's agenda for world domination from the accused Fantastic Four. This is the safety spiel. All hail Victor Von Doom of Latveria. Master of Western science and the forbidden black arts, he has eliminated strife and hardship from our beloved nation. Soon his benevolence shall spread as he assumes his rightful mantle as ruler of the world. More doom bots watching us.
fun comic book history. The Fantastic Four uh, caused a very small scar on Doctor Doom's face, which is the reason he wears the mask. Uh, in the original series, it did, but he's was fairly handsome. But because he was such an egomaniac, that small scar caused him to believe he was just horribly disfigured. Now, in later iterations, they actually made him completely disfigured, uh, which kind of ruined the essence of that. But I think they've brought it back to where it's this small thing that is hardly noticeable, but he is such an egomaniac and so and absolutely power-hungry and insane that he can't stand people seeing it. And then after the ride, you exit here, and you actually will exit into an arcade. Let's walk through the arcade and then actually get to the test seat. I love a coin drop game. Willy Wonka. The theming, the theming is kind of everywhere. They've got Spider-Man and the circus. Accelatron here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. And I am Storm. You must board the Accelatron to help augment my weather control Jump. powers. Magneto grows stronger by the minute. Once the generator is in motion, remain seated in an upright position with your hands and feet inside the apparatus. To magnify my weather power, rotate the wheel in front of you. The quicker the wheel turns, the more power generated and the faster oh, you will spin. That is tight. Good luck. I do fit. It rubs against my stomach just a little bit, but I should be able to turn the wheel still. I'm going to put you guys down here since I can't hold my phone while this is going. What do you think? Also, what a terrible angle. So apparently I can turn the wheel very slightly while it's not turning. Once you have momentum and it's really going, it makes it a lot easier to turn the wheel. But I can turn it. Welcome to the Stormforce Excelltron. In order to help us defeat evil Magneto, rotate the silver wheel in front of you as... All right. <laughs> Slightly tight getting in and out, but it passes the fat test. Time to fat test the Incredible Hulk coaster here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. The Incredible Hulk coaster is an opening day attraction here at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure, opening with the park on May 28, 1999. It's a steel roller coaster from B&M, which includes a launch element, and speeds go up to 67 miles per hour. It has a 110-foot height, a drop of 104.9 feet, and the length of the track is 3,700 feet. It also includes seven inversions, uh, including a zero-G roll, a cobra roll, two vertical loops, and two corkscrews. It also contains a tunnel element uh, for the roller coaster as well, where you go up under the tunnel and then come back out. The ride went through an upgrade in 2015, reopening in 2016. That included requiring all guests to go through a metal detector, making sure they'd remove cell phones and everything else uh, into the lockers provided. You have to be 54 inches to ride. It lasts about 2 minutes and 15 seconds. But the real question is, will it pass the fat test? So there are test seats outside, and there's two of them. This was the first one I ever did where I had this problem. So I did not know the first time I ever did this test. But if you look here, this is gonna be the slightly smaller one with the single belt. 
and the one with the two belts is gonna be the larger one. So for my audience, you wanna make sure to test the one with the two belts there. Unfortunately, you couldn't hear me as I was recording. A team member was kind enough to help me. As you can see, uh, try to grab these before you sit down to see if they're going to fit. Uh, they are hard to grab, um, but as you can see here, it's a pretty far ways out. And unfortunately, I think that means it's going to fail the fat test. Shout out to Ramon, who was the team member that helped me film that real quick and uh, was really awesome. Also, it just went from a 45 to a 20 minute wait. It's time for class. Let's go back to Hogsmeade and hit up Hogwarts. Oh, dance party! Right, one, two, three. Dance party! We're back. Hey travelers, we're gonna fat test Hogsmeade here at Universal's Island of Adventures. Come join me. Time to fat test Hagrid's Magical Creatures and Motorbike Adventure here at Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure. So there's two different seats on this one. You have to make the light turn green. Unfortunately, it looks like this is not going to pass the fat test. We're still going to try the actual ride to see if either of these work, but it uh, looks like that's going to be a no. So. Spiders, maybe? Oh, wait, no, that's the motorcycle. Before we test the ride itself, let me go ahead and show you and talk to you about the ride itself. Uh, don't mind the Thestrals. Dead clever and useful they are. Right, off you go. We'll meet at the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Hagrid's is a multi-launch steel roller coaster that opened in 2019. It's the sixth Harry Potter themed attraction for all of the Universal Resorts. And it replaced Dragon Challenge. Oh, no, there's no need for that. Well, I think that's enough for today. You should probably head back. We'll pick this up later. Hmm? The bikes will take it. This roller coaster does not have any inversions. It gets up to a height of 65 feet and it drops 17 feet and only a speed of 50 miles per hour. In total, it's 5,053 feet long. Galloping Gorgons! Arthur warned me about those bikes, but I didn't think they'd take Ollie into the Forbidden Forest. Just hang on! Oh, and don't mind Fluffy. His barks are worse than his bites. <laughs> No, don't panic. I'll just, uh... Oh, no. Looks like you've lost power. Uh, I've got you. Don't worry. 
Reparo! Sorry, I never was great shakes at magic. While it doesn't have extremely high speeds, it does have seven different launches. The last one being the most extreme from zero to 50 miles per hour in four seconds. Oh, crikey, you're tangled in devil's snare. Repeat, Lumos Salem after me. Lumos Salem. Woo, that was close. Now we just need to... Oh, you found my missing scroots. Best be getting you out of here before you get blasted. Now, hit those purple buttons. Hold on. Dragonfire's got a kick. In total, it costs $300 million to build, which sounds very high, but think that Guardians of the Galaxy is the most expensive one ever built, and that was $500 million. Well, I'll be. There's a unicorn. And look, she's a man. Ready, lucky thing to see such a sight in the wild. But Merlin's beard, we did see pixies, scroots, and unicorns. Oh, and I'd be grateful if you didn't mention any of this to anyone back at Hogwarts. <laughs> see you next lesson. Yeah, I need to go. So unfortunately, I did not fit. I did, and, and it's on a moving. You're you're getting in on a moving platform. So uh, they slowed it down. I got off, and uh, my friend went ahead and uh, rode. But that one unfortunately still fails the fat test. They did tell me that they check the uh, the lines to make sure for weathering and make sure that the test seats are the same are are good every day. So if you are wondering about that. Uh, you should be good to just on the test seat on this one to, ch to test it out. So we've tried the test seat, we've tried the ride itself, and unfortunately, Hagrid's fails the fat test. They then bring you over here, and now I wait on my friend to get off. By the way, the seat did stop, and so it looked like it was going to fit, but it did not go back far enough according to the team members here. So it will stop, and it will feel like you're, you're good, but then it will not be far enough back uh, if you're my size. The owl's joyous flock on this Merry Christmas day. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Now it's time to fat test Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Welcome to Hogwarts and Fat Tested Travel. I'm Jason Vaughn. I'm currently about 370 pounds. I'm five foot eight inches tall with a 54 inch waist and I fat test rides all over the world so you can know what you can be comfortable with. And this is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. We're gonna check the test seat, the ride itself and do a POV and talk about the ride. So here are the test seats, they have two side by side. It looks like they are exactly the same. So these are the same seats that are on the outside of the rides and they yeah. apparently have a little bit more room. So we'll see, a bit in here. 
This has to turn green. See, my arm's actually in the way on this one. So, I can't do that. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to work. So, we're going to try their actual ride now and see what it's like. This was my first time going through the queue, and uh, whether you can fit on the ride or not, I highly recommend going with your party through the queue uh, if you're able to, and just check it out because there's so much cool Have stuff here. Have you lost a dragon again? Yes, yes. Well, I'm sure he'll find a Helga. He always does. Let's just hope he doesn't burn down the alley like last time. Sounds like yet another clear violation of the Warlocks Convention of 1709. Hold up. But then again, with all these muggles running about, perhaps the dragon's just what we need. What a dreadful thing to say, Salazar. A few muggles might be just what the Slytherin team need, judging from their most recent efforts. Exactly when was the last time your house won the Quidditch Cup, Salazar? I will not dignify that with an answer, Godric. Oh, listen to all of us quarreling. Our guests must think us most ungracious hosts. Good. Then maybe they'll leave. If Dumbledore is it right and proper that they be here, then they are more than welcome. Besides, perhaps one of our younger guests will wake to an hour one morning and find themselves some to Hogwarts. Their master of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. But as you probably know. This is one of the schools where young people come to study the magical arts. For centuries, Hogwarts has educated scores of young men and women, many of whom have gone on to distinguish themselves as fine witches and wizards. A few, it's true, have strayed to the dark side. Once a young boy named Tom Riddle stood precisely where you stand now. You must be more than before I fat test the actual ride, here is a POV courtesy of JS Land, and I want to talk to you about the ride itself. So this is a motion-based dark ride. It's found at Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Universal uh, Studios Hollywood in California, and uh, Japan, and in Beijing. The ride takes you through a Hogwarts castle. You will experience dragons and dementors. You'll and even you experience a game of Quidditch. This is the oldest version of the ride, opening in 2010. And Beijing has the newest version, opening in 2021. The ride vehicle is an Omni-style bench, and you start off in the room of requirement. It does lift up, move all around, and can get very intense. You have to be 48 inches tall to ride, and the ride uses a robotic arm to move you around. Uh, this is from the Teary Group, which is the same group that did things like the Amazing Adventure Spider-Man, Shrek 4D, Revenge of the Mummy. Most of the original cast does reappear in this to uh, guide you through the ride. The Golden Ticket Awards awarded it the uh, number one dark ride from 2011 to 2015 and has consistently been ranked in the top five. Now, let's get on to trying this seat. Due to the speed and Omnimover type of attraction this is, I could not get good video of trying the seat. Unfortunately, I did not fit, but the team members here were fantastic. So big shout out to them. And of course, you exit through the gift shop. Time to fat test Flight of the Hippogriff. This is a family coaster here. There is no test seat, which is always a good sign. Next 
All right. We'll see if both of us fit in this one today. Fair enough. Okay, feel free to stretch your legs out a little bit forward, okay? All right. Hey, we made it. Yeah, we both fit. <laughs> Flight of the Hippogriff is a family style coaster. Don't forget to nod. It originally opened as the Flying Unicorn in 2000 and was rethemed after closing in 2008 to the Harry Potter world. It is also found in Japan, Hollywood, and Beijing. That was Hagrid's hut we passed by in the queue, and we boarded the vehicle in the Care of Magical Creatures class. This is a steel roller coaster that reaches a height of about 42 feet. The length is 1,099 feet and gets up to speeds of about 28.5 miles per hour. There's a 36 inch height restriction and the ride lasts about one minute and six seconds total. There are two trains running and each train has about eight cars in it so it can fit up to 16 riders at a time. Usually the line for this doesn't get too long and because it's such a short junior roller coaster I would be careful but it is the most fat friendly uh, pl ride in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter area. Flight of the Hippogriff passes the fat test. So far is the only ride I can currently ride in uh, wondering, wonderful world, Wizarding World of Harry Potter. That's a cool, fantastic beast lounge fly. So if you get a wand, all of these different uh, areas interact with the wand, all the little storefront windows. I don't know what they do, but most of them do something. Over in the restroom, you can hear moaning Myrtle. Along with your robes and your wands, you can buy your a lot of broom here. So how do you like your butterbeer? Hot, cold, frozen? I think I like it frozen the most. Honeydukes for all of your magical candy needs. I've still never tried one of these chocolate frogs. Oh, that's not a frog. <laughs> that is a glass case. Here are the frogs. The frogs are three for $35 or $15 each. Time to fat test the Hogwarts Express from Hogsmeade <laughs> to King's Cross. I, I do. I don't know. I do. Why not? That's going to take us quite some time. To it's get. my sister, so. Oh, your sister? Yeah. What's your sister's name? Ashley. Ashley. Hello, Ashley. I hope you can hear me. I hope that you get out of that muggle box, yeah. I know that it's going to take quite some time uh, to sort out at St. Mungo's, but when you do, you can come say hello to me and we'll grab a butt to beer together, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah. She's, she, she's kind of mean, so. Oh. You know, she deserved it. She deserved it? Yeah, she was very mean to me when we were kids. Oh, I see. Sibling rivalry. Yeah, a little bit. They'll always get you there. <laughs> All right, Ashley. Well, best of luck to you, yeah? And uh, your name? Jason. Jason. All right, Jason. I'll make sure not to get on your bad side <laughs> either, yeah?
We've made it to King's Cross in London, AKA Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. If you've not watched the fat test for this, please make sure to do so. As for now, that brings this chapter to a close.